Let us now look at the social educational priorities that schools should be processing. So let's begin. What should be a school's priority? In other words, what should be the aim, the goal, the objective, the purpose of the existence of a particular school? Now, obviously, it's a given. Education for all students in the school. All students have to be educated. Okay, So all students have to learn now. All students does not necessarily mean that all students will be A-grade students. No, students will learn at their level, will learn according to their potential and capability, but all students will learn. In that process of making all students learn, some decisions need to be taken. Will it be child-centered? Will the education we provide in the school focus on the child? child-centered will the child be involved will the child be engaged will the child be on task so that the child learns through experiences will it be activity centered will we do activities and that brings about the teaching skills the pedagogy the teaching methods the teaching strategies the teaching approaches all that can be driven to activity based learning or will it be experience-centered? As adults, as the teacher, I have experience that the child does not have. Will that experience help the child learn? So it's not just answering the question of what is the priority, but also looking at how it will be done. Simply identifying a priority will not get you anywhere. You have to focus on the priority and the process of achieving that priority. What should be a school's priority? Again, it's another question. Focus on academically talented students. That's what some schools do. They only focus on the bright kids. The admission test, if you don't have 80% or more, you cannot be admitted to the school. So already, my intake is academically talented students so I have to deal with them very differently if I weed the poor ones out if I weed the slow or the not so bright ones out with my admission test and don't even admit them then the curriculum to challenge the smart students so reading a text copying from the board answering questions is not going to work these smart kids want discussions, want problems to solve, want puzzles to solve, want movies to watch. They have to do different things that in a school that has all types of students will not be able to do. So you have to look at what kind of a school you are and then focus your curriculum on those kind of students that you admit or you take into your school. I don't think it is fair to take only the bright kids. I don't think it's fair to have just one type of students in a class. I think we need to have mixed ability classrooms where you have the bright kids, the average kids, and the not so bright kids all together in the same classroom. Focus on disadvantaged students. Now, this is the slow learner or the weak child. How to help the disadvantaged students gain same access to education. And here we are not focusing on the mentally retarded child or the severely disabled child. We are looking at children with things like dyslexia or learning disabilities where the child has ADD or ADHD or those kinds of things where they can be part of a regular mainstream classroom that will help them gain from their better achieving peers. And that is why when teachers make groups of students, they should make mixed ability groups. If you have groups only of bright students and average students and the not so bright students, well, you already guessed which group will be successful, the bright one. Which group will not be successful, the not so bright one. So you've already set up students for success or failure 
having mixed ability groups provides opportunities for the not so bright kid also to gain from the average and the bright kids and learn through that experience.